I welcome all of you for this evening session on two lovers story. So I'll continue from where they left the drama. In the drama you will see the weakness of a person. And when the weakness was known to other person, the other person can manipulate the first person. So in this world, everyone has some particular kind of weakness. Supnaka knew the weakness of Ram, uh, sorry, Ravana. And when she, uh, she wanted the revenge, and Ravana was not taking revenge, she used the weakness, namely lust. And using that lust, she made him fight against Ram and lose his head, right, and life. So we see that how it is very important to, to know one's weaknesses and to work on them, not just uh, getting allured by others' temptations. So I'll add another story, the story which is just before this story, Ravana's old story, before this. There was one sage, Kusadvaj. He was son of Brihaspati, the teacher of the gods. And he had this, Kusadvaj had a daughter. And her name was Vedavati. She was born from Vedas, the fire. And uh, when she grew up, her father, Kusadvaj, asked, whom you like to marry? And she had a nat natural inclination to marry Vishnu. But to attain Vishnu, was not an easy thing. So the father told her to perform austerities and penance. So she was sitting on a forest and she was meditating on Vishnu and you know, performing her austerities. And she was getting more and more powers. She was becoming a yogini, female ascetic. And uh, once when she was performing that austerity, Ravana was crossing from the sky way. And he was, you know, he happened to look at her down. And when he looked at her, he got a question that how can a girl is doing austerity here in the forest? And second thing he got, you know, let me just go and you know, check with her. So he came down and he asked, you know, he approached that girl and he asked her, who are you? And she was, you know, half closed eyes, she was chanting home, oh, mantras and all. And then she opened her eyes. And Ravana asked, who is your father? What are you doing here? And she said, because he was an ascetic, so she came to know who is he. And she understood he is Ravana, and he has lusty intentions. That's why he has come down here. So she started thinking what to tell. So she told the truth, that I am Vedvati, daughter of Kusadhvaj, and doing austerities here. And he said, Austerities? Who told you to do austerities? This age. You are young. You should enjoy life. You know, come and stay with me in Lanka. You know, I have a Lanka which was, you know, I have taken from Kuvera. It's a golden Lanka. I am the king of the Rakshasa race. I am so and so and so and so. He started bragging his own personality. And she said, See, I have made up my mind to marry Vishnu. As soon as Ravana heard Vishnu's name, he said, Vishnu, he was enemy of Vishnu already, and he heard Vishnu, he said, Vishnu, what he'll do? You know, he's nowhere, I'm the king, I'm the most powerful, marry me. Vedvati said, Vishnu is supreme lord. He said, supreme lord, nobody is supreme, I'm the supreme, everybody is fearing me. 
And when she heard that he started blaspheming Supreme Lord Vishnu, she started, you, you get lost from here immediately. And Ravana, he thought that here is a lady of high spirit. She is matching my chemistry, chemistry match. I should make her my wife. He got more determined. So what he did? He just caught hold her of Locke's hairs and started dragging her immediately. Because Vaibhuti was not an ordinary lady. She was ascetic. She did like this. And her hairs cut. And Ravana fell back. Law of conservation of momentum. <laughs> Ravana surprised, shocked. How it happened? <laughs> and then she turned to Ravana and said, You, evil minded Ravana, you have touched my body. And I don't wish to live in this body anymore. And I curse you. I am going to quit my body now. And in next life, I will be cause for your destruction. And then chanted some mantras. Fire started coming out from her body automatically. And in that fire, in front of Ravana and all his army, all his rakshasas, she burnt herself to ashes. Ravana continued his journey. Vedvati also continued her journey. How? She was born in this life as Maya Sita. When Rama was knowing that Ravana will come after this scene of you know this marriage, and he is going to abduct Sita there. So he told, Lord Rama is telling to Sita that Sita such and such thing will happen. So Sita said, okay, so what should I do? He said, okay, you should go to Parvati, stay with Parvati now. Okay. And then he invoked Agni. So Agni came, fire came and Sita entered in the fire. And through fire she went to Parvati. And she stayed with Parvati for the time, one year, around one year. And the from fire came out Vedvati, Maya Sita, Nakli Sita, the false Sita who came out from the fire. This is, this, is in the, this is not in the outside, this is inside. Only these few people are knowing. And this for Maya Sita came, and when Rama was outside, it was Maya Sita, the duplicate Sita, who Ravana came and abducted from that house, that hermitage from Panchvati, Nasik. And then Maya Sita went to Lanka. Now what happened to her? You see the love of Vedvati, how pure hmm, that love was. So when she, uh, when she was in uh, Lanka, she was in the Asok Vatika groves, the kind of garden. And she was lying there and every day Ravana has to come there and try to allure her by telling his glories, his prowess, his paraphernalia, his kingdom, his golden Lanka and everything. Mentally he was harassing her, alluring her every day that you marry me, become my wife. And physically, there were some rakshasis, ugly looking, hideous rakshasis. And they used to torture her by trying to break her emotionally. They tried, they, they wanted to break her down. So Sita was completely under 24 by 7 under turmoil, emotionally. And there was every chance, she had to say yes. And she could have, you know, she could have enjoyed everything what Ravana had. But her love was very pure. She kept saying no to Ravana. Kept saying no to Ravana. Kept saying no to Ravana. And when the whole time had passed, around 11 months, around one year, then we know that how Lord Rama came, killed Ravana, and again there was Agni Pariksha. Agni Pariksha was two reasons. One reason that, you know, the Lord is saying that I want to test your purity. But that was not the main reason. The main reason was this, that Original Sita was with Parvati and she has to come from fire one way. So this Maya Sita has to enter in fire and that Sita has to come out. So that's why the fire was put. So this Maya Sita went in and this real Sita came out. Okay. Now so second life Vedvati, she could not marry Vishnu. Okay. So now the love goes to the third life. Vedvati was born again as Padmavati in South India. Those who are from South India, you have a good news. So Padmavati was born from Chola king Aksharaj, granddaughter of Sudharma, one of the famous kings in Chola dynasty. And when 
she was born she was she was also born like sita valli she was born from the earth and uh, like a lotus all those things. and when she grew up she was uh, in her royal garden once and srinivasa lord srinivasa lord balaji we have very beautiful deities here of sri balaji you may take darshan so balaji srinivasa she, he was on a horse and he was going here and there in that forest of tirumala and he happened to come to that royal garden and at that point of time he saw uh, this uh, vedavati's third life padmavati he happened to see her and after that actually that time one elephant came and srinivasa just took the elephant in control and she was saved from that mad elephant and then she left and she was sick in her home and her mother dharani devi she was able to she was not understanding what to do how to cure my daughter so he was trying different different things so at that time srinivasa lord srinivas he went back to his house his mother bakula devi or in south india bakula mallika <laughs> see she said what happened beta so srinivas is saying you know i saw a girl and uh, i'm not knowing what to do i want to marry her she said okay i'll give you i'll tell you a plot what you should do she said you should uh, guy yourself this guy yourself as a gypsy woman as a tribal lady and take a stick in your hand gypsy stick <laughs> like you know like this you wave the stick and go around in the kingdom say that i am a gypsy woman i cure the incurables with this stick through the mount, god of mountain you know goddess of mountain speaks through me and i cure things and srinivas liked the idea he dressed himself like a gypsy woman took a gypsy stick he went in the kingdom and saying you know loudly i am a gypsy woman and the goddess of mountain speaks through my mouth and i can cure the incurables and then you know that she was immediately brought in front of the dharani devi the queen and she said oh my daughter is sick you know we would like to treat her she said yes so here is srinivasa entering in that chamber where padmavati is lying and he saw the pulse and the traditional ayurvedic doctors see the pulse and uh, he said dharani devi she is love sick what she is love sick what yes <laughs> if you want to cure her you should marry her to srinivas who is speaking this <laughs> yes <laughs> and his mother will come after some time bakula devi she will propose for marriage you should accept and srinivas says no other than supreme lord who is speaking srinivas who said lord supreme lord is here as you know no no supreme lord is there he is son of bakula devi then dharmi devi she was in totally you know disbelief she passed this message to the king aksharaj and aksharaj asked the brahmanas and the sages and the sages confirmed yes lord indeed has incarnated as srinivas as a you know, son of bakula mallika and uh, king said oh it's a great fortune that you know our daughter can marry this great king uh, great uh, supreme personality god it and then they arranged for the marriage and lord srinivasa married padmavati so vedavati she was really in love real love first life no marriage second life no marriage but third life she married <laughs> right and we know that marriage was incorrect you know pompous marriage and uh, lord took loan from lord kubera and lord bade blessed that anybody who comes and gives donation you know i'll pay the interest of kubera from that so many devotees go and pay that money so that lord can pay the interest back to the kubera so we see here the true love is uninterrupted love this is one of the qualification of true love true love will be uninterrupted you cannot check the true love no matter what obstruction you put right to give you a more common day to day example say a boy and girl they saying girl say get a rose for me and the boy say it's raining outside <laughs> so inter interrupted right <laughs> uninterrupted means you know it goes ahead <laughs> first is uninterrupted second is unconditional 
there will be no conditions. No conditions apply. Right? True love is no conditions. Who? Uh, so that means, of course, it is a very deep topic, unconditional love, but no conditions apply. You don't put conditions that I love you because you're rich, I love you because you're fair, I love you because you are smart, I love you because you are good orator, I love you because you like whatever, dash, 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 dash. None of this. These are all conditions, external conditions. You may lose them, but your real thing will be always with you. Right? So unconditional love will always have the genuinity, the reality of the unconditional love. So the, it says the unconditional love exists between Lord and the living entities, every one of us. And Lord with that unconditional love, he gives his love letter. He gives his love letter to each living entity in the form of his vani, his song, Gita, Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita is love letter from Supreme Lord to each living entity. He is telling, come back. How can you come back to me? I will help you. Sarva dharman paritajya. Give up everything. Maam etam saranam. You surrender to me. Aham tvam sarva I will forgive all sins what you have done. Master, don't fear. So he is sending his love letter to all of us. Lord will never cheat us. Why will never cheat us? He has everything with him. Who cheats us? Who needs something in his life? If I need something from you, I'll cheat you. You have something which I don't have, I'll cheat that. But Lord is Lakshmi Pati. Like somebody is Lakpati, he has how much? Lakh. Somebody is Karodpati, how much he has? Karod. But can you call anybody Lakshmi Pati? Can you say that I have all wealth in the world? No. So Lakshmi Pati is only Supreme Lord who is playing flute on the top. Right? So Lakshmi Pati has all the wealth. So he will never cheat us. Lakshmi Pati will never cheat us. His love is very real. And his love is given in a message in Bhagavad Gita. So anytime in your life you want to check who is with me and who is not with me, who is really loving me, who is not loving me, open the Gita. Any page, read one, one page, you will find the answer there. That yes, this is what I am supposed to do. All others, what the others are saying are cheaters. They are trying to cheat you. They are not my real friends. Because Lord's love is unconditional. He will never cheat us. What will Lord gain by cheating us? Nothing. So, the message of Lord is given in Bhagavad Gita. This is unconditional, uninterrupted love. But on the contrary, people who are lacking in their life something, when they love to each other, there will be, or there may be, hope so there may be, but <laughs> chances of getting exploited by each other. So if you want to perfect your love, put Lord in the center. When Lord comes in the center, your love becomes complete because you love everyone then. Till the time your love is incomplete. Like some say, I love my society. Some say, I love my India. But we don't love others. Some say, Vasudev Kutumbukam. But then you don't love the animals. Some say, PETA, people for ethical treatment for animals. Right? So their love increases, increases, increases. But when you love Lord, you love everyone. Because Lord's children, every living being is child of Lord. So when you love Lord, you have to love everyone. You cannot, you cannot hate a single person. Are you getting? So when we start loving the Lord, then our love, love to Lord makes our love to every being complete. Till the time our love is partial. Incomplete. Right? And how we know that we are loving Lord? By following what Lord says. And how we know what Lord is saying? Very simple, read Bhagavad Gita. Very simple. Read a page. If you don't want to read a page every day, read a page per week. If you don't want to read a page per week, read a page per month. If you don't want to read per month, read at least one page per year. And if you don't want to read that also, keep the book with you. Whenever you are in trouble, whenever people are trying to cheat you, you don't know which is the right way to go in life. If you think that all are cheaters, open the book at least that time. And you will find the answer there. Here is a, somebody is telling me about my real situation. You will get your answer. Have faith. 
Sarvasya chaham hiti sannivishto matta smriti jnanam apohanam cha. Krishna is saying, I am in everyone's heart as super soul, as Paramatma. As soon as you get desire to connect to me, I will open that particular page from Bhagavad Gita which will exactly tell you what you are supposed to do now. Hare Krishna. Very amazing. Very, very amazing thing. So this is the message. The message is that keep, keep Bhagavad Gita with you to know who is really your lover. That's what our society is. Gita use society. Gita will teach you what is what. What is right, what is wrong. And you don't have to read every day if you want. You can just keep with you. Read it when you are in trouble. <laughs> so we saw two kinds of love story here. I'll not take much of time. We have with us uh, one of our batchmates, Dr. Amit Dravid. He was one of the toppers from BJ. And uh, we used to have a lot of uh, tussles in our quizzes, in, in sense of presentations and all. And we used to give a good fight to each other sometimes. And later I came here and he took another direction. Rather, I took another direction. <laughs> so I'll request him uh, to. to uh, Start next. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Keshwanan. Uh, we would like to also now uh, officially welcome Dr. Amit Ravid. When I saw his, uh, actually I was just going through his CV, his curriculum with it, and I was like kind of, oh, this is something. Actually, most of the things were like going, he has so many scholarships, you know, studied abroad and, and in Pune has been uh, a lot of research. He's one of the best researchers on, on, on HIV in the whole world. And uh, we, we, we are really glad he's here today. And uh, as I said, we have two doctors. One was the spiritual aspect of love. And I think we're going to see how our material doctor uh, will throw some light on something. It may have some technical things maybe, but uh, let's hear him also. Thank you very much, Dr. Kamit. Mr. Amit Ravid, thank you. Hello, everyone. It's a pleasure to meet all of you, and it's a pleasure to meet Dr. Keshav after such a long time. I think we have been meeting now after almost 10 years. And uh, I am so happy that he has become a big man in the entire ESCON movement. I am a bit different. I uh, will be looking after the material aspect. I have zero spirituality in me. I am a doctor, I am a practicing doctor. And uh, I practice as an HIV consultant in Pune. I am actually a HIV consultant, an infectious disease consultant attached to Ruby Hall and Noble Hospital. And Dr. Keshav has actually asked me to come to attend this Control Your Vices program because if you don't control your vices, you end up with me. So I hope none of you end up with me. I hope all of you have a young, good, happy, married life ahead. And I'm going to tell you some things which all of you need to know about the real danger of HIV and sexually transmitted diseases. As you know, the first case of HIV in India was seen way back in 1986 in Chennai. And today we have almost 25 lakh HIV positive people in India. And the hotbed of the HIV epidemic in India is the state of Maharashtra. So Bombay and Pune are one of the hotbeds, one of the, you can say, the headquarters of the HIV epidemic in India. And it's a really sad state of affairs. It's not something to be laughing about. But yes, we all treat a lot of HIV patients in Maharashtra. And the mo most important cause of all these sexually transmitted illnesses, not just HIV, I am even talking about hepatitis B, hepatitis C, I am talking about syphilis, I am talking about whole host of sexually transmitted illnesses and the most important cause is having heterosexual sex. Heterosexual sex, it can be extramarital, it can be premarital, 
and it is fueling the HIV epidemic. So almost 95% of the cases which we get are because of heterosexual sex, having sex with commercial sex workers and then passing it on to your family. So this is how the entire mode of transmission of HIV is there in India. As I have already said, almost 25 lakh patients we have in India. And the really interesting thing is once HIV enters your body, for almost 8 to 10 years you will have no symptoms. So there is no way that you can go and get yourself tested because you will have no symptoms. You will be leading a very very healthy life for almost 10 years and suddenly after 10 years the HIV within your body will be eating up your immunity. It will be eating up your immunity, it will decrease your immunity to such an extent that you will become any, any small infection can enter into your body. So after 8 to 10 years you will start falling sick. So you might have tuberculosis, you might have herpes, you might have recurrent episodes of pneumonia, you might have episodes of jaundice and that's when we start picking up people. So we start picking up people when it's already too late. It's already when the HIV is full blown, it has entered the body, it has caused a lot of damage. Do we have treatment for this? Yes, we do. So now, currently, we have a lot of treatment for HIV. Giving treatment can guarantee that a person who is HIV infected can lead a normal life, just like you and me. So, I have patients who are on treatment, who are taking treatment for almost 20 to 25 years and they are doing fine. They are doing very well. The drugs are so good that we can guarantee that even an HIV positive person can lead a normal life. But my crux of the topic is prevention is always better than cure. It's better that people don't land up with us. It's better that you protect yourself. It's better that you never ever get into this uh, entire problem of sexually transmitted illnesses. And how you can get it? It's by totally avoiding extramarital sex, totally avoiding premarital sex. If you're going to get married, please get yourself tested. Get your partner tested because you never know. It can be transmitted not just by sex, but it can also be transmitted by blood transfusion. It can be transmitted by taking injections. So there are multiple ways of transmission of HIV. So avoiding premarital sex, avoiding extramarital sex, getting yourself tested before marriage is a sure shot way of knowing whether you have HIV or no. If you are married, you should have a faithful monogamous relationship and that is the best way you can prevent HIV. All I can say is it was a great opportunity to talk to all of you over here and uh, I hope that all of you take my message home and take Dr. Keshav's message home of our, uh, I didn't get you, uh, I think it is total and uh, unconditional love and uh, thank you for inviting me over here.